Beneath the cliffs of Deir el-Bahari, hidden near the valley's edge, lies the unfinished tomb of a man who rose from humble origins to wield unprecedented power in one of history's most enduring civilizations. His name was Senenmut, and though he was neither pharaoh nor priest, he was entrusted with constructing the great mortuary temple of Queen Hatshepsut and overseeing vast royal projects during Egypt's 18th dynasty. But inside his private tomb, designated TT353, archaeologists discovered something far stranger than architectural plans or funerary art. Painted on the ceiling was a celestial map, the oldest known astronomical representation in Egypt, dating to around 1470 BCE. At first glance, the ceiling seems to follow familiar Egyptian patterns, rows of deities in solar boats, decans representing 10-day star periods, lunar phases, and constellations stretching across the sky. Yet one section stands out and remains unexplained. It depicts a rare planetary conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, and Venus, aligned in a way that doesn't match any known configuration from Senenmut's lifetime. Astronomers attempting to reconstruct the sky of the 15th century BCE using modern star mapping software have failed to find a match. Some suggest the event may have occurred thousands of years earlier or later. Others argue the alignment may not be astronomical at all, but symbolic. But if so, what was it meant to represent? And why place it in a tomb? The western part of the ceiling is dedicated to lunar cycles, showing the phases of the moon and the passage of hours during the night. The eastern half traces the sun's journey through the sky, marked by star deities. These dual panels aren't merely decorative. They indicate an advanced understanding of celestial movement, timekeeping, and cosmology. Inscriptions link the stars to the afterlife, suggesting that the night sky was not just a clock, but a divine roadmap for the soul. Senenmut held over 80 titles, including Overseer of the Works of the King, Chief Steward of the God's Wife, and Tutor to the King's Daughter. Yet his rise to power is unmatched by others of non-royal blood. Some Egyptologists speculate he may have had access to sacred or scientific knowledge, usually reserved for the priesthood. Others suggest he was part of a deeper intellectual tradition, one now lost. His tomb, curiously, was abandoned unfinished. Despite its elaborate plan and exceptional ceiling, Senenmut was never interred there. No remains were found, no burial equipment. The chambers were sealed but empty. Why construction stopped remains unclear. Was it a political fall from grace, a sudden death, or something more clandestine? Some even propose that the ceiling was a kind of esoteric diagram, a celestial code not meant for the living, but for initiates, those trained to read the heavens as sacred text. The inclusion of planetary alignments that don't correspond to known skies has led fringe theorists to suggest connections to earlier lost civilizations or encoded prophecies. Though unproven, the ceiling continues to resist definitive interpretation. Unlike most tombs, which focus on lineage, judgment, and resurrection, Senenmut's sky-oriented design turns our gaze upward to a universe carefully mapped, but only partly understood. What knowledge was once common enough to paint on a tomb, but is now lost to us?